Greetings. Um, my name is Gary Abbott. I'm Director of Communications for USA Wrestling. Welcome to our pre-event press conference for the 2024 U.S. Olympic Team Trials, which will be held right here in Bryce Jordan Center starting tomorrow and also on Saturday. Our nation's best wrestlers in the Olympic disciplines of men's freestyle, women's freestyle, and Greco-Roman will battle for the ultimate honor, a berth on Team USA for the Olympic Games Paris 2024. The United States has already qualified at 13 weight classes for wrestling in Paris, and the winners on Saturday night punch their ticket for Paris. Uh, in the other five weights, the Olympic trials champions will travel to Istanbul for one last chance to earn a berth in the Olympic Games. Uh, with our capacity crowds here each day, and the event being broadcast live on Peacock and on USA Network, we're going to have a great show here in Happy Valley. Now to welcome you to Penn State and the community is Rick Kaluza, the Senior Associate Athletic Director for Finance and Business Operations, who's also the administrator for the NCAA Champion Penn State Wrestling Program. Rick? Thank you, Gary. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to Penn State. We are extremely thrilled and honored to uh, be the host for the 2024 U.S. Olympic Wrestling Trials. As Gary mentioned, I am the uh, Senior Associate Athletic Director here in Penn State Intercollegiate Athletics and also the Sport Administrator for our uh, Outstanding National Championship Wrestling Program. Uh, truly an honor to work side by side with such an elite staff and student athletes uh, in our program, uh, led by our head coach, Kale Sanderson. Uh, we're thrilled that the nation's best freestyle and Greco-Roman wrestlers will be competing in one of the country's top venues here at the Bryce Jordan Center uh, and in a region of the country that's so rich in wrestling passion. Uh, Penn State Intercollegiate Athletics is, is proud of the long and storied tradition that the sport of wrestling has here and we're excited to be at the center of US, a res, US wrestling, uh, the, US, I'm sorry, the U.S. wrestling world this weekend uh, as we set the roster for the 18 athletes who will represent our country at the 2024 Paris Summer Olympics this summer. At this point, I'm going to hand you back to Gary for the rest of the program. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to introduce uh, Rich Bender, the Executive Director of USA Wrestling. He'll say a few words about the wrestling competition we get to enjoy this weekend. Well, i got to start off by saying I don't know how you become the Senior Athletic Administrator for a team like Penn State. Lucky break, I mean, that's a pretty good gig. I don't <laughs> get that. But on behalf of USA Wrestling and Rich Bender, I'm here just to say thank you. Thank you to Penn State University and the, in particular the Penn State Wrestling family for uh, being such wonderful hosts for which is our for our most important event right the US Olympic trials is the most important event in the calendar for, for USA wrestling it's it's my favorite and also my least favorite event uh, of the of the quad just simply for what it means to a lot of people obviously there's going to be 18 athletes that walk away this weekend really happy and the rest not so really compelling stories at every weight class couldn't be more excited and proud uh, of the product that you're gonna is going to be on display this weekend. I think it's the single biggest aggregation of elite wrestling American talent ever assembled, ever assembled uh, in the history of our sport. And uh, man, we just are so honored to be able to to serve uh, these athletes and others as they as they chase their Olympic dreams. So on behalf of USA Wrestling, I just want to say thanks to our athletes, thanks to the Penn State University and all you as our media who uh, show an interest in our sport. So thank you. Thank you very much, Rich. And uh, now I'd like to uh, tell you the game plan here for this press conference. Uh, I'll introduce our athletes and ask each of them a few questions. Then we'll open it up for uh, questions from the media. We'll have a microphone to pass around. Uh, and please, when you do that, identify yourself, uh, speak into the microphone so the athletes can hear you. And then when that's done, we'll have some time for one-on-ones with the athletes. We've got a little tight space here. We may move people around um, uh, so that there's room for everyone to get up to the athletes. I don't think I want them all sitting here with everyone crushing. So we'll kind of move around and take advantage of the space we have here. But that'll be uh, the last part of the program. So um, uh, without further ado, let's talk about the important people here, our, our, our athletes. Um, and I'll start from my end of the table and work down. Uh, he's a native of St. Paris, Ohio, two-time NCAA champ and Hodge Trophy winner here at Penn State University. He won the 86-kilogram gold medal 
at the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. Add in three world titles and a world silver medalist, David Taylor. To his right, originally from Bloomington, Indiana, she won four WCWA national titles at Campbellsville. Member of the 2000 Olympic team, she's won two senior world silver medals and a number of age group world medals for Team USA. She qualified Team USA for the Olympics at the Pan American Olympic qualifier, Caleb Miracle. To her right, a native of Parker, Colorado, uh, NCAA runner-up, four-time All-American at Arizona State, a U-17 world champ, two-time age group world medalist, and a three-time senior world team member. He also qualified our nation to compete in Paris uh, with his performance at the Pan Am Olympic qualifier, Colton Schultz. And to his right, um, competing in men's freestyle, um, he's from Arantsville, Pennsylvania, state champion, two-time runner-up from Biglersville High School, uh, and made the 2021 U-17 world team. Here at Penn State, he's a two-time NCAA finalist and the 2004 NCAA champion, Levi Haynes. Uh, and I'll start my questioning with David Taylor. Um, David, and I hope the date's right, August 5, 2021 was the day that you won your Olympic gold medal in Tokyo. Does that seem like a short or a long time from now? And could you tell us about what's changed in your life since that historic day? It, it's gone really quick, um, and I think that was, you know, obviously part of the excitement for preparing for Paris 2024. Is you know, it's it's not a full four-year quad. Um, and I would say, yeah, I mean that that that's a life-changing day for me. You know, every decision I made, every goal I set was to be an Olympic gold medalist. That's the that's the pinnacle in our sport. You know, um, so I just you know I, I I play back those days on days that I don't maybe feel my best. And uh, remind myself, you know, of just like the excitement, and enthusiasm that I felt that day, um, and I, I'm just grateful that I can continue to feel that now. You know, I, I think a lot of times people ask me questions about you know, 2024 and what are your plans after this, and my my plan is to be present in the moment, and I have the opportunity to do something really special this year, and I'm. I believe I'm, I'm the best I've ever been, you know, and I think I've every each and every year since then I feel like I've improved I've gotten better and better and better in that time. You know, my life has changed. You know, I, I had a daughter in London, right? You know, right before the last Olympics. Now I have two more girls, um, you know, Ivy and Birdie, you know, dad of three and your, your, your life doesn't stop, you know, just because you win the Olympics, it doesn't mean your life stops and it's over. You know, you, you just go back to doing what you do. You go back to getting better at practice each day. You go back to helping people get better each day. And my competitive instinct is stronger now than it ever has been. You know, when I step on the mat, I have every intention to be the best. And that's what I'm training for. That's what my family is helping me prepare for. Um, and my, my daughter is going to be four next week. And she understands this sacrifice. She understands what I'm training for every single day. And she's so excited for me to compete. You know, she, she understands that. She has empathy. She has excitement. Um, so I'd say a little bit different about this one the last one. The first one I did for myself. Um, this one, I think I'm, I'm doing it for my family. Um, I'm doing it for myself, but, you know, my family's been such an important process. Um, and I want to be a role model to my daughters, someone they can look up to and um, be proud of their dad. You know, so I'm excited for that. So um, Penn State has produced the most athletes competing here in men's freestyle. Uh, both postgrads and undergrads, right? And there's five in your weight class that competed at Penn State, plus an incoming recruit here. Um, what's that say about the Penn State program and the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club, which is affiliated with the program? I, I think it's it's just it starts at the top. You know, our coaches are the best leaders, role models. You know that you could ask for. You know, Coach Kale is, was who I wanted to wrestle like when I was a kid. You know, I dreamt of wrestling for Coach Kale, you know, and still to this point, you know, to be achieved every goal that I wanted to achieve and beyond, um, and to still be doing that along someone I looked up to, you know, obviously is is great. And, and I'm just a small, small piece example of that. You know, I think every athlete that comes to Penn State, um, their desire is to be great. Um, that's why they come. And you know, for the last 15 years, Penn State has shown that 
if you want to be a national champion, you come to Penn State. You know, and I think now we're saying, hey, if you want to be the best in the world, you come to Penn State, you stay afterwards, and you train the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club. And, you know, our, we just have a collective group of people that want to get better every single day, and we're pushing each other every single day. Um, I know when I come into the room, and I, I have to wrestle my best. Uh, there's no there's no other way to come in there you know you have to be sharp you have to be excited because every other person in that room is sharp and excited and hungry to also be the best and it's just a collection of, uh, of obviously a lot of talent but just a lot of great people and start at the top of their coaches coach kale coach casey coach cody jimmy kennedy jake warner um you know we just obviously have a great group of people that are willing to be selfless and help us achieve our goals and uh, you know we're just trying to follow their lead and do the best that we can. And one final question for David: uh, What do you see are the biggest challenges, or maybe you look at it differently as you face trying to stay ahead of the competition, both domestically, which you'll be here at trials, but also at the international level? You know, I'm 33 years old, um, but it, it, it's no different than when I was eight years old. You know, I was a national champion when I was eight years old, and, and from that day moving forward. My goal is, was only to step in the tournament and be the best wrestler I possibly could be, and I wanted to separate myself from my competitors. That's the only mindset that I know. I know no other mindset. So it's irrelevant. If I'm wrestling in a tournament, my goal is to be the best, and, I, and in doing so, I have to continue to close the gap. You know, At points in my career, I close the gap on some people, um, but most of my career, it's been trying to find a way to continue to separate that. Um, and I have great competitors in the room. You know, lucky to have a competitor in Asanya Zdani in the world that I have to get better every single day. Um, and I have people domestically that are pushing me every single year. There's never a year I get to say, hey, this is an easy year. I'll work, I'll wait for the world championships. I have to be ready at the trials. I have to be at my best. And then I know I'll be at my best at the world championships or the Olympics. So, you know, we have a great era of wrestling. We have amazing competitors and I, no, I need to be sharp every single day. And in doing so, I think that's bringing out the best competitor in me. Thank you very much, David. Uh, we move on to Kayla. Uh, Kayla, in 2021, you made the Olympic team and got to compete in Tokyo. <laughs> what did you learn from that experience that helps you now as an athlete as you enter the trials this year and obviously, uh, hopefully, the Olympic Games for you uh, in the future? I think uh, <clears throat> the biggest thing that I learned after the Olympics is that I made the, the moment bigger than it was. Um, I looked at it like, holy crap, I'm at the freaking Olympics, you know? In the end, it's just six minutes at a time, right? So I didn't look at it for the six minutes for six. So now, like, as we're going, we're preparing, my, my coach and I, it's, it's six for six, right? It's six minutes at a time. We got to win two matches, right? Got to get my hand raised twice. And so it's six for six. And just... Taking that into world championships right after, um, other final X events, and then this weekend on Saturday night, it's it's six for six. I don't need to be thinking about the next thing, about, oh, I'm gonna make my second Olympic team, I'm gonna go on and do what David did and win a gold medal. No, it's one step at a time, wrestle the match. Like, I'm not wrestling not to lose, I'm not trying to wrestle to win, I'm just being my best self and letting it fly, and if I do that, then good things will happen. So Kayla, back in late February, um, you earned the Olympic quoted 62 kilogram for the United States uh, women's program, and we got all six in going in for the women's team going to, to Paris. How big was that for you and for the whole U.S. women's team to get that taken care of before the Olympic trials? That tournament's rough. Um, I did it last quad, had to qualify it that way, and that was, you know, peak COVID time. Uh, we didn't even know if that tournament was happening. So this time, at least we didn't have to worry about the COVID. We weren't. We knew the tournament was going to happen. Um, it's just, it's tough. And thankfully, none of us have to go to that last chance. That's a scary thing to do, to leave it all in the hands of one tournament. So to get, no matter what happens, we have six women representing the United States at the Olympics, and that's incredible. Um, I think only one other country has done that so far. On the women's side, yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty impressive um, and then uh, what was the last bit of <laughs> well, just about personally I mean yeah, you know what you're facing right oh yeah I mean just the wrestling Pan Am championships and then Pan Am Olympic qualifier right after like I knew what I had to do I went to that that first tournament um, I know Amit and Dom didn't uh, but for me the seed mattered um, I had to beat you know one of the top girls in the world Anna Godinez to 
get that spot. And I knew I was either gonna have to do it that first tournament or that second tournament. I, I was like, I wanna get it done, right? Um, put them on the other side of the bracket, let them fight it out. But yeah, getting that spot, I mean, it, it was kind of sad um, after winning that semifinals match because we didn't wrestle the finals. Um, there was, you know, the excitement of winning a match, you know, tight match, I think it was 3-0. But then watching Anna Godinez win it on the other side, they, the Team Canada already had their team set. So when she won that, she was on the team. And so the joy there um, was just so cool to see. But for us, it was like, all right, we have another job to do, right? And it's a big job. This My bracket is not an easy bracket to go through. Um, so just uh, knowing that this weekend, you know, it's all solidified. We're all going. And uh, I don't know, last, last time we got cool hats. Are we going to get cool hats again? <laughs> you're not supposed to let the secret out. Oh. Actually, you don't know yet what you're getting. No. <laughs> there are a few people in this room that do, but not, <laughs> probably not me. Right? <laughs> One other question. I mean, you've been successful at the international level since, I don't know, when we met you in the cadet days, high school, teenage kid, right? How do you keep yourself fresh and find joy in the sport as you continue to push towards very, very high goals? That's that's tough. That you know, there are waves. I know during COVID it was tough. You know, it's like, do I really love this sport? Do I really want to do this? And then I got back in the room. You know, after that super long hiatus, and I was like, oh shoot, yeah, I really, I really do love this sport and I enjoy this. And you know, going through certain like training struggles, um, it's made me look at the sport different. And I was like, man, this this is tough. Like, it doesn't need to be this tough. Rath wrestling is hard. Right and like the outside stuff doesn't need to be that way. So I think putting myself around the right people, you know, having a great coach in my corner who's gonna see me on my off day and somehow mess with me and get my head, you know, back in it. So we can just have fun and flow and go and having great training partners and things like that. Just like being around the right people. I think, you know, life is about community and relationships. So having those good relationships um, really make this sport um, enjoyable. And so I think that's that's really what it is, the root of it all. Thanks a lot, Kayla. I appreciate you. Uh, we'll move over to Colton. Um, Colton, in 2021, you reached the finals of the Olympic trials, and, and you didn't get to go, right? Um, since then, you've been our number one person at your weight class all three years heading into this uh, event. But what were your takeaways from the last event at the trials and uh, that's going to help you going into the event this year? Yeah. Um I mean, first takeaway, it looked, uh, it looked a heck of a lot more fun winning than losing. Um, so obviously, uh, trying to do everything I can to get there. But second takeaway, you know, uh, when you do come up short, uh, especially with a big goal like making an Olympic team, um, you know, you're faced with two options. You can either sulk and be down about it, or, uh, you know, you make decisions to start getting better every single day. And that's what I've done um, up to this point, just getting better every day. And uh, it's been working out so far. Just got to keep it rolling. And, uh, yeah, hopefully – Roll through here, roll through Paris, and we'll, uh, we'll have a good year. <laughs> okay, that sounds great. <laughs> so uh, talk about your ability to maintain a very high level of your Greco-Roman wrestling while still competing in folk style in college and, and being successful there. It's pretty rare, right? Uh, maybe for some freestylers to do both during the same year, but, but you're in a specialized sport in Greco. Uh, how did you balance uh, both styles, and how does it work for you in Arizona State that you're doing both styles? Yeah, um, you know, I got the easy job. I just got to go out there and wrestle. Um, it's what I love to do. I get to do it every day. Um, so my job's easy. My coaches, they got the, the tough job of figuring out how to make it happen. Um, you know, they put me where I need to be, uh, put, put me with the right people to make sure uh, I can make my dreams, my goals happen on both sides. Um, yeah, I mean, they've, uh, it's not too often you got, you got coaches letting you skip out on important duels, important tournaments to go uh, wrestle around the world, train with the best guys, but... Um, you know, our coaching staff, they've not just let me do it, but they've pushed me towards it. Um, and it's been, it's been a blessing. It's been, it's been fun so far. It's going to keep it rolling. And then one other question. Uh, I remember these days. I mean, you used to drive down from Parker, Colorado, to go to the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs to train Greco, right, with Momir and some of these other people just pushing you real hard when you were just a teenager. When did you first dream about winning a gold medal in Greco-Roman at the Olympic Games? Yeah, I mean, as long as I can remember, as early as I remember, um, you know, every single teacher I had from kindergarten up, I told them I was going to be an Olympic champion. Um, you know, I never, I don't think it ever clicked 
what style it was going to be. Um, I don't think it, I don't think it matters. Wrestling's wrestling. A gold medal's a gold medal. Um, you know, Greco, everything fell in line. Everything clicked with Greco. Um, and I was blessed with a wonderful opportunity training with the best in the world down in the Springs. Um, only an hour drive after high school. Not too bad. Uh, yeah, it was. It's been a blessing. And uh, you know, not grabbing legs like I, like I was all growing up, but uh, throwing people's pretty dang cool. Um, Greco's great. It's been a blessing. Thanks a ton. Appreciate you, Colt. So now we'll move on to Levi Haynes. Um, Levi, as a kid growing up in the Pennsylvania wrestling community, did you ever imagine wrestling in an Olympic trials at Penn State? And uh, what are you looking forward to about this weekend? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I ever imagined the Olympic trials being out here at Penn State. Um, I always imagined myself wrestling in the Olympic trials. Uh, it's been a goal of mine to win the Olympics since I can remember. So uh, I think it's special that I have the opportunity to do it right here in the my backyard now. So um, I, I think that's that's pretty special, and not many people get that opportunity. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I think going into the weekend, I'm just uh, very thankful for the opportunity to compete. Uh, just coming off of a season, so uh, anytime I get to get on the mats, a great time. Yeah, and let's talk about that season. Just a few weeks ago, I saw your arm raised in the finals of the NCAA tournament, right? And and you knew two things. One, if you win, you qualify for the trials. And two, you know, you're going to go from folk style to freestyle pretty quick. Did you take any time off? Did you jump right back into the room? How did you manage your preparation for this event? Yeah, um, so I took off about a week um, after the NCAA championships, and I, I just talked to my coaches. We came up with a, a, a good game plan, and... Uh, been executing that for the last uh, three weeks, so I have the best coaches. So, uh, kind of like Colton said, I kind of have the easy job. I just do what they tell me, and I know it's the best thing for me. And just one other final question: uh, This guy to my right, he coached you when you were younger than you are. He might still coach you. I know that. But uh, <laughs> could you tell me what kind of influence David's been on your wrestling career and and, and your development as as an athlete and a person? Yeah, Dave's a man. He's. Uh, I, I started wrestling for Dave when I would have been in uh, eighth grade. So uh, when I first met him, I didn't know a whole lot of wrestling. I could just work hard. And uh, so Dave kind of taught me uh, how to wrestle um, before I, I didn't have uh, many tools. So yeah, I'm, I'm forever indebted to, to Dave in my wrestling career. And uh, he's also showed me uh, not just about wrestling, but kind of how to conduct myself as a person as well. Um, first time I met Dave, he it was like I had known him for forever, so I thought that was pretty cool, and I've always looked up to him for that. Um, I know I've met some other other people in the wrestling community, kind of seem to hold themselves to like a higher uh, kind of standard or, or, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but that, not Dave; he's uh, kind of been like uh, a friend to me as well. So yeah, I, he, he's the man, and uh, um, I. Just want to say thanks, Dave. <laughs> and and while you're wrestling and getting ready, he may not be mad side for all your matches, or will he? <laughs> uh, not this weekend. Yeah, yeah, I just okay. okay. I'll watch it. I'll watch it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm sure you'll get a text or two, right? <laughs> so hey, at this point, I'm gonna hand the microphone over to Pat. Um, from uh, Penn State, you guys all know him as the Sports Information Director for the wrestling program here. Uh, raise your hand, identify yourself, who you want to speak to, and, and clearly ask your question in this microphone. Thank you. Mike Finn from Wind Magazine. David, this is for you. You're a close friend of Kyle Dakes. And I hope you could talk about what he's been going through with this loss of his father, how he'll get through this weekend, that type of thing. You know, I, I can't put myself in Kyle's shoes, you know. Um, I've known Kyle for a long time, you know. As long as I've known any competitor probably in my life, and doing so, you know, I've known Doug and his, and his mom, you know, Jody. And um, they're great people, and, you know, Doug loved Kyle, and Doug loved wrestling, and, you know, he just, I feel like he always had a, uh, I remember as kids, you know, and my dad just didn't know, you know. He's just like, oh, well, just, you know, this is what I think is best for my son. And, you know, Doug always knew what was best for Kyle. He was, you know, he wrestled at a high level. You know, his path was a little different than mine. You know, Kyle, it's just like a little slower, but I think Doug always knew he was going to get there. And obviously he got there, you know. Kyle became one of the greatest wrestlers we've ever seen. 
and I know Kyle and his dad are you know we're extremely close. Um, and during this process, you know, I just I just try and be there for him, you know, any way I can, you know, even if it's just like shooting a text or whatever it is. But um, you know, Kyle's a, you know, uh, I mean. Yeah, it's tough. I I feel for him and his family, but I mean, he's, Kyle is a competitor at the highest level, you know. Um, and there's nothing more than what Doug would want than to Kyle go out and compete as best, you know, next weekend or this weekend, a couple of days, you know. So, um, and I know Kyle's going to do that. He's going to compete, you know. He's a competitor, and he's got a, he's got a, you know, he's got he's got a goal, you know. He's got a goal. He's jumped about for a long time, you know. So, um, but he looks ready to go. Know, he looks ready to go, um, and uh, you know, just I know, I know there's definitely a piece of him that's gonna be wrestling for his dad this weekend, you know, and uh, you know, just he's gonna, he's gonna be ready to go. Raise hands if you want. Right here, please. Hey, David, mom at Gorgeous Stani. Um, I know your focus is here this week to make the team, but um, you've said in the past that you and Hassan push each other every single day. Um, with Austin Port coming down to 86 in Iran and Hassan having the shoulder injury, how, have you given that any thought? And what's your what's your take on on all that and preparing for you know the ultimate goal, which is the Olympics and your Iranian your, your Iranian opponent? Yeah, right now, I'm focused on this weekend. You know, I got some killers this weekend that I got ready for. You know, I, I'm fortunate to be sitting in the finals, but whoever makes it to that mini tournament, you know, they they've also had one goal in their mind. You know, every one of those guys, they're not thinking about beating each other; they're thinking about beating me. So just like Hassan or Gassipur or whoever else in the world at E6 Kilos, they're, they're really training for one person they have been for a while, you know? So that's great to be in that situation, you know? But my, my main focus is getting better every single day. My main focus is to go out there and wrestle with an attitude and with a love and with excitement. Um, that's my main focus right now. You know, you can ask me that question in a couple of days, we can talk about it. But uh, right now I'm focused on enjoying this weekend and wrestling the best of my ability. Jim Carlson, Colton. Um, the majority of the fans here, I don't believe, are too familiar with Greco. What can you and your counterparts, you know, how, why will they walk out of here saying, "Yeah, I like that style"? Or, what, what can yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, freestyle, folk style, all that leg chasing, it's great. I love it. Um, there's nothing, not a, not a thing wrong with it. Um, but there's there's something to be said about Greco Roman. Um, when you got you got to meet a guy in the middle of the circle, chest to chest, and you got to figure out a way to either dump him on his head, run him out of, run him off the mat, or take him down. Um, there's not a whole lot of options, so uh, you're limited on what you can do. So it's a real chess match, and uh, I think the, the guys who love, who really love the fight, who love Greco, um, you could recognize the chess match even in a low scoring match or in a high scoring match. You can you can notice the subtleties, and uh, yeah, there's a, there's a beautiful there's a, there's something beautiful in the in the little details. That uh, can make that can make a Greco match, uh, you know, sway one way or the other. Uh, Joe Smeltzer, Nedy Sports. Now, this is for Levi. Uh, you talked earlier about the quick turnaround from winning NCAA's to to uh, training for this. Uh, obviously, there's a big transition going from folk style to freestyle. With you uh, having a decorated career already at Penn State and folk style, what have been the biggest challenges with having to adjust and train for a freestyle? Yeah, there's a lot of little tactical things about freestyle wrestling. Uh, so I think just kind of getting back in the swing of, of, of picking up on those little things, uh, like wrestling the edge and then your, your part to air wrestling. So, uh, but. I have great coaches that have really been helping me out with that, and then uh, other uh, great athletes alongside me training for that. So um, I think we're at kind of an advantage coming off of a season. You know, we're kind of in that good tournament shape stuff. So I think, you know, as long as you can stay healthy through a college season, it can be just as beneficial coming into the, uh, the Olympic trials here off of a season. So. Um, but other than the little tactical things, I think folks down freestyle wrestling are very similar. Hi, Zora Stevenson, NBC Sports. This one's for Kayla. Kayla, you've called 62, um, the hardest weight class in the U.S. I'm just wondering if you can break down why and your perspective wrestling in that weight class. 
Mike David and Colton were, were all sitting out in the finals, so that's real nice. So they get to battle it out on Friday. Uh, but just looking at the, the accolades of the athletes, we have Mallory Velti, who is, I believe, a two-time bronze medalist. We've got Jen Page, uh, Nittany Lion girl. She won a bronze medal this last year at 59. Just last year, Macy Kilty up at 65 won a silver medal. Um, and then we have... Who am I missing? Yeah. Macy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess we... Yeah. Macy Maljen. We got a lot of medals. Yeah. And then, I mean, you have some young guns coming in. You have, like, an Adugo, right? Like, she can spike some people. She knows how to wrestle in a tournament. And so she's very dangerous. You have, you know, a young girl like Katie Lang coming in. Like, she's coming from uh, 65, 68. So she's coming down. So it's just a lot of really tough people. And there's actually a lot of different styles. Um, I feel like you look at weight classes and generally, you know, they're going to follow a style and 62 is just a mixed bag. You don't know what you're going to get. You're going to get some power, you're going to get some speed, you're going to get some funkiness, you know, so I think uh, it'll be fun to watch on Friday, for sure. Um, this one right next to Yeah, Yeah, J.D. Reed, this one's for Levi. Levi, you said you've been uh, dreaming of being uh, uh, wrestling in the Olympic trial since you were um, as far back as you can remember. When you were doing that, did you envision yourself uh, defeating a legend like Jordan Burroughs, which you will have to do um, just to even make it to the finals uh, to see Kyle Dakin? Your thoughts on wrestling um, legends uh, like that, like Jordan Burroughs and Kyle Dakin this weekend? Yeah, um, I definitely envision myself wrestling those guys. Uh, I've been watching those guys wrestle since I was, I, I don't even remember how old I was. I was pretty young, but, uh, so, no, I think that's, it's, it's pretty special that I get to compete against those guys. I was actually just talking to, uh, with Dave about this earlier, is like these guys are sticking around longer now, and so, um, like you said, wrestling with legends of the sport, so uh, I'm very thankful for that opportunity. Um, I don't think, it's been done very many times before. Uh, these older guys are sticking around longer, so it's kind of a great opportunity for us younger guys to, to mix it up with some of those guys that are generations ahead of us. So, yeah, it's special. Jared Parker, WJC, my question's for Levi. Um, obviously, haven't caught up with you since NCAAs, but uh, originally had a couple of your teammates, Carter Mitchell, in your bracket. Now Mitchell's still there. Um, just for all the Penn State guys, what's the transition like from going from a full season working together to now there's a potential that you could have to face uh, your teammate in order to get that Olympic uh, spot? Yeah, that's just part of being here at Penn State. Um, I think of it more as a gift that I get to get train with those guys, uh, some of the best guys in the world. So. Uh, it's just part of it when you come here. Uh, obviously, we have the same goal. So um, when you do that, sometimes you have to compete against one another. Um, I think it kind of benefits my training. Uh, I get to wrestle those guys all the time, pushing one another to achieve those goals. So um, yeah, I, I don't really look at it as um, I had to go wrestle a teammate or anything. It, it just is what it is. And I know that they're going to wrestle me my, uh, with their best. I'm going to wrestle them with my best. So. Um, I'm just thankful that I get the opportunity to train with them all the time. This is up in Lego, Ohio. Cast. Uh, this message. Or this uh, question is for David. David, you've been doing this at such a high level. Uh, I remember seeing your first camp when, at, at uh, 10 years old with Burnett. You wrestled the whole camp with a broken foot. Do you remember that? Yeah. It was wild, and you cried every session. It was you and Logan Stever <laughs> mangling each other, and it was wild. <laughs> Uh, how are you able to have such a you know high threshold for pain and to, to suffer like you suffer, man? It's like it's unbelievable to watch. But how how have you been able to do this for twenty plus years now? I vividly remember that camp. Uh, yeah, I uh, that was a tough one. I think we just I don't know. As kids, we didn't know anything different. You know, we were just we we're just competitors. We wanted to be the best and. You know, wrestling was different back then. It was just like a little more barbaric, you know? It's just like you show up and you, you've got these dads that just like put you through crazy workouts and you just like, all right, whatever, you know, let's, let's go, you know? But, um, you know, I, I just think wrestling has evolved so much. And as wrestling has evolved, you know, 
the way you take care of your body has evolved, nutrition has evolved, weight management has evolved, all that stuff has changed. Um, you know, and I just, as, as time goes on, you know, is I have a fire to be the best, and, and when you have a fire to be the best, you're gonna do what you have to do to stay at, at the top of your game, you know what I mean? So I think, what, you know, the biggest thing, you know, when you're when you're 10 years old, you just show up and you can wrestle, and you can wrestle forever, and you can show up and wrestle forever the next day, and then again the next day, and I did that for a really long time. After the Olympics, and I've talked about this in the past, you know, after the Olympics, you realize, okay, continue doing this. I can't quite do it the exact same way I'd been doing it before. You know, so, yeah, I mean, um, you know, I come in and, you know, you wrestle Levi, you know, he's 14 years younger than me, but he's trying to take me out, you know? Like, he's saying, you know, he is, you know? It's like, um, so I got to come in ready to go every single day. And so we have these young, these young guys, you know, on our team that are pushing us constantly, you know, every single day. So as much as it's benefiting them, it's benefiting us. So as time goes on, you just train a little bit different, but your mentality stays the same. And the last couple of years has really showed, I really, sh you know, just was like, all right, you can do it. You can do it at a high level and you can do it a little bit different. And, uh, but the whole goal was to get to 2024. The whole goal was to be an Olympic champion again. So I think that as soon as last year's world championships passed, I had a different level of excitement. So I'm like, okay, we're back in the Olympic year. And once you've won the Olympics, nothing else really quite means the same. And, uh, you know, this year it means the same again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm excited for this opportunity ahead. Um, you know, people say it all the time, but truly I, I feel the best I've ever felt. Um, I feel ready to go. You know, you, you have uh, no stone unturned mentality, and that's what I have going this weekend and focus on wrestling the best of my ability this weekend, you know, and then we'll continue to see what happens after that. This one's for Cole and Kayla. Um, with Art Martori retiring this year, what does it mean to represent Sunkiss kids like this uh, on a stage like the Olympic Trials and trying to parlay it into Paris? Sure. Uh, well, the Martori family, the Sunkiss kids family. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I would be <clears throat> the wrestler that I am today without them, but definitely not the person. Um, they've given me so many opportunities. So it's sad to see them going, but. I mean, I'm looking to represent them well this weekend. I feel like I've done a good job since they picked me up as like a little 16-year-old. Uh, and again, at the, the Olympic Games this summer, um, they've just given so much to me. And I am forever thankful for them and how they've changed my life and how they've, they've changed wrestling and USA wrestling and especially women's wrestling. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I second all of that. Um, you know, everything they've been able to do um, is just is legendary. Um, the opportunities they've been able to give to uh, you know kids and, and, and athletes that are chasing their dreams um, can't be thanked enough. There's not enough thank yous in the world to go around for everything they've done. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be here in my journey if it wasn't for them. Um, you know, none of this would be possible. I wouldn't be able to be able to chase my dream every day. So it's been a huge blessing. It's an honor. I think uh, it's on. It's on my shirt. I think it's sixty-seven Olympians. Is what they say. Sixty-seven. Sixty-seven Olympians. So that's a pretty oh, solid man. number. And Lots. a lot of them were your heroes growing up. Oh yes. yeah, for sure. A uh, ton of heroes and a ton of medalists. So hopefully you have two more sitting here that we could add to this list. Uh, so and plenty more. Hey David, uh, Riley Holsinger from WTAJ. Obviously, the 2020 U.S. trials were supposed to be here. Now you'll finally be able to wrestle in the trials here. How much does it mean to you that your path towards hopefully another Olympic medal includes a stop here in Happy Valley? <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, it, it, this is the mecca. This is the mecca of wrestling in the world, you know. And uh, we're excited to compete. You know, I think there's pros and cons to competing in your hometown. Um, but you know the the Olympic trials, the Olympic years, it, that movement is uh, it's inspiring. It's inspiring to a lot of people. It's inspiring to us competitors. You know, it's like I said earlier, it's the pinnacle. But it's inspiring to the community. You know, I was just I was at the rest. I was at a um, I was checking out the register the other day and just co casual conversation. You know, like oh, we got Olympians coming to town this weekend. Olympic trials, are you going? You know, people in in, in Happy Valley they understand wrestling at a very high level. And they're excited. They're very excited for you know what's to come. It's good for our economy. You know, having people come in and, and be here and be involved in this community. People, you know, there's a mystique to Penn State. You know, like how, how the heck do they win so much? 
you know, and I think this weekend everyone gets kind of tap into that a little bit. They get to come into our town and they get to experience the things we get to experience. You know, you get to re the athletes get to come in and wrestle in the Penn State room, and um, not everybody comes to the Olympic trials with the intent to be an Olympic champion. You know, some people come to the Olympic trials and that's something that's really exciting to them. They get to do that here at Penn State. You know, so I think it's it's great for the highest level of wrestling. It's great for you know all the spectators and it's great for everything in between. So looking forward to uh, competing this weekend in front of Penn State fans. I think we probably have time for two more questions before one-on-one's bet. Um, I see someone here, and then we'll look for another hand. Is there one in the back? Austin Grad with NBC Sports. This question's for Kayla. So like you mentioned earlier, how the women's wrestling game has continued to grow. It was six, you know, USA team wrestlers here. Um, what advice do you give to young wrestlers that are girls that are looking up to you guys watching these trials in the Olympics? What advice do you give to them to get to the point that you were at today? I mean, I think from my experience being a young kid growing up, um, I was four years old and I was like, I want to be an Olympic champ. We didn't even have women's wrestling in the Olympics at that point. Uh, but as I got older and I went to Fargo, right, I had Sarah Hildebrandt was my roommate, um, eighth grade, she's maybe a junior, and uh, getting to see her and be like, oh my gosh, like there's a there's a whole world out here. So that representation really matters. And then Sarah and I, you know, got to enjoy the Indiana wrestling together and then got to go to Tokyo together. And that's just kind of a, a whole storybook thing. She was like a mentor to me. So I think just understanding, you know, there is this whole world that you can tap into um, and, you know, follow these girls because that, that representation matters. Um, and so just have fun with it. Um, I think whether you're I'm talking to a young boy or a young girl, whatever, just with wrestling, it's so hard, like I mentioned earlier. It's just such a hard sport, so I think just have fun with it, find a way to enjoy it. Um, you know, those tough practices are going to be tough, but you got to enjoy those things, those trips, the teammates, the coaches, all of that. Um, yeah, so just enjoy the ride. I think I saw one more, yes. Yeah. Zora again with NBC. Looking for some clarification. What role does dodgeball play in keeping you all loose, uh, warm ups, and how widespread? Like, is that every practice? How often? I see some smile. Colton, Levi, if you want to answer, I know uh, David and Kayla have had a lot of time, or anybody. I would just like to say I'm the best dodgeball player. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you'll ask that. Some of you guys have done it, right? Yeah, our room, we play handball every day. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a first round pick every every time. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, it's no small deal, you know. Do you stand in front of the goal? No, ah, eh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> this crowd, I'm not trying to step on nobody. But, uh, it, gets, uh, it gets intense. It's good weight cutting. It gets, uh, gets everybody moving. It's everybody, gets the competitive juices flowing. I saw him just last week, and he, you were running up and down the mats for the, the handball. So it's, it's fun, like you said, getting the competitive juices flowing, just having fun with it. Yeah, a good sweat, too. You do. I've seen the women play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, we love the games. But also, it's really fun to play with the ASU boys and the Sunfish squad because, you know, they're, they're pretty good. They have some, like, you know, behind the backs, you know, crazy, crazy throws. It's, it's fun. Fun is, to watch. Is this before practice or after? Where, where does this fit in? Oh, usually before. We'll let you know if we see it during a match. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>